Hello everyone, it is Toby here, back for a slightly different video than I would usually do. This is an updated tour of my gym bag. I've done one of these videos a long time ago, at least two years ago now, and a lot has changed since then. I am much stronger. I do a lot more strongman movements because I have a lot more strongman equipment, and my gym bag has got exponentially bigger to the point where I need to buy a bigger one. So in this video, I'm gonna go over in detail every single bit of kit that I take to the gym with me every single day and the bits of kit that I might not take every single day but are good to have in there for certain events and certain scenarios uh, that you might face. So without further ado let's jump into the gym bag but before we do that if you have just stumbled across this channel and you think you might like a sort of more amateur level of strongman training content feel free to hit subscribe so you get notified of every single time I upload one of my training sessions or similar videos surrounding Strongman. So with that being said, let's jump in to the first item that I have in my gym bag. Now this won't come as a surprise to many of you, but it is, of course, a lifting belt, the staple of anyone pursuing strength training to a high level is a lifting belt. This is the 13 millimeter Cerberus Strength lever belt. I personally love a lever belt because I find that I don't have different belt sizes for my different lifts. I like to have one solid secure belt that I know won't go anywhere, that I know is easy to get on and off. Uh, and that is why I go for the lever belt. Cerberus strength belts are absolutely fantastic for strongman. They're really, really solid, really durable. I've had this one for a couple of years now. It may have even been in my last video of the gym bag tour. It was the first proper bit of strongman gear that I got and it was this exact Cerberus belt and it's served me really really well. I've obviously lost and put on a lot of weight and there are plenty of holes to then uh, change the size. When I do put on or lose weight it is fantastic, super easy to change. You do need a screwdriver but that's not too difficult and it's super easy to use. If you don't know how to use a lever belt you just put uh, the prong end into these four holes. You can even do the two holes if you want it slightly looser but it won't be as secure and then when it's on you you just flip the lever shut and that is how you use the lever belt uh, as i said yeah couldn't get anywhere without this this provides all of my intra-abdominal support helps protect my back my core and make my lifts absolutely sail up and it is an absolute essential that i have at the gym with me every single day sticking on the belt theme the next is the surface strength underbelt now i've also had this for a fair while ever since i started doing log press because if you don't know, log press has a tendency to pinch you, so having an underbelt is fantastic. And I actually end up using this every single time I use my main belt as well, because it makes it far more comfortable and I think far more supportive. Uh, so if you don't like the hard uh, digging in of a proper lifting belt, then an underbelt is absolutely essential. Uh, it's a really, really good bit of kit. Mine's definitely too small for me now. It's only a medium, uh, but currently the upgrade version I want of large or extra large are sold out with some extra supportive velcro but this is still serving me absolutely fine it gets locked in place by the hard belt uh, and you can also wear this for stuff like stones tire flips loading where you might want a little bit of extra back support but you don't want a heavy belt to get in the way an underbelt is absolutely perfect for that so probably the next most essential piece of kit that I have in my gym bag is the wrist wraps again from Cerberus these are fantastic, super supportive, and they have solved any problem that I would ever have with my wrists by providing really, really strong support. I use these for squatting, I use these for log pressing, I use these for bench pressing. Pretty much the only lift I don't use these for is the deadlift. Uh, they provide a super, super amount of support to your wrists, and if you want to lock your wrists in so they don't move back and forward while you're doing heavy lifts like this, these are the absolute ideal. The Velcro on them is super, super strong. They are super elastic, super supportive. You could get really, really tight with them. Uh, yeah, I absolutely love them. Wrist wraps are definitely uh, a staple to every single session. I wouldn't go anywhere without high quality wrist wraps. I've obviously done the whole buy cheap, buy twice. I have gone through my fair share of super cheap, bad wrist wraps. But as soon as I bought these Cerberus ones, they've been fantastic. I never need anything else. And I couldn't recommend anything more than a super good pair of wrist wraps. So sticking at the wrists, we have lifting straps. I've got two different pairs. I've got the ones that I use the most, which are the figure of eight 
lifting straps. These are obviously a strongman staple. If a competition allows figure of eights, you should use them. It takes all of the grip out of anything you're doing. So if you want to do a heavy deadlift and not worry about grip being a limiting factor, figure of eight straps are fantastic. You'll tax your grip in other areas. Uh, I use these for all sorts of things, deadlifts, axle deadlifts. I even use them for really super heavy lap pull downs and super heavy cable rows so that grip doesn't become the limiting factor. They have a fair bit of use, uh, as you can probably tell by how tatty they are. I can't even show if you can see this on camera, but these are again, an absolute staple to my bag. Uh, I have these with me at all times because uh, not only are they super useful for the deadlift, but if I want to go super heavy and push the accessories uh, and not have grip, as I said, be the limiting factor, then these are fantastic. But another pair of straps that I do have in my gym bag are uh, some normal figure sixes. So uh, just some regular lifting straps, which you have to wrap around the bar. Uh, and of course, these are great to have because not every single competition will allow figure of eights. Some movements are better with figure sixes. Personally, I use these to help me get into the front rack position on a front squat. Uh, so yeah, they're really, really useful. And again, these are from Cerberus. Uh, you'll see that as a theme through my gym bag. I've brought pretty much everything from Cerberus because they're just fantastic for all of my needs. But yeah, you can see these aren't quite nearly as tatty as the figure of eights because they don't get much more use. But as I said, if you're not a strong man or you have competitions that don't allow figure of eights, then I would go for these. Figure six is nice and thick, will provide you nearly as much support in the grip as the figure of eights. But again, they stay, stick with me in the gym bag just in case I feel like using them. So we will move up the arm now to the elbow and we have got our elbow sleeves. These are Cerberus Extreme Elbow Sleeves. I've done a review on these. Uh, these are still the same pair that I bought a couple years ago, still holding up pretty well. You can see they really much look almost new. Uh, and these are an interesting one because obviously if you're a power lifter, you're not allowed to use elbow sleeves as far as I know. Uh, and general gym goers might not get much use out of them, but for strong men, you definitely get a lot of use out of these. They have fantastic support for the log and bench press and also really help in keeping the joints warm, which prevents elbow tendonitis or tricep tendonitis. They're a fantastic bit of kit, really, really useful if you want to get a heavy log up overhead. And I use these as I say for both my bench press and my log press, really good bit of kit. Now, how many times am I going to say really good bit of kit? Well, a couple more just yet. So the next thing we're going to move on to is the twin of those, but in the knee division, the knee sleeves. These again, fantastic. I've got a bit of a knee injury at the minute, as you know, and these are what's helping protect against that. Really, really supportive, give you a bit of a, a spring at the bottom of the squat. I use these for squat, log press, any moving event. They just help keep those joints warm in your knees, provide that extra bit of support that you might need. And I can't say anything bad about them. They're really, really good. The only bad thing I can say about them is they're a pain to get on and off, but that means they're working. They're fantastic. Again, the same pair of Cerberus ones I bought all that time ago. It's got a little bit of tacky on, but otherwise looks absolutely brand new. Still provides the exact same amount of support. Couldn't be happier. Sticking at the knees, we have got the Cerberus knee wraps. Now these I use far less frequently than the Cerberus knee sleeves, but knee wraps are now a staple of my gym bag. They help me when I'm getting really heavy on the squat for singles and doubles, providing that spring and extra support to the knees when you're moving super, super heavy weights. I'm not gonna stick on these too much because I say they're still relatively new to me. They don't come with me to every single session, but if I know I've got a heavy uh, single, double or triple on squats, then these will be making an appearance. They're fantastic, provide a good bit of support. But as I said, if you're not going super heavy, I wouldn't recommend wearing them and stick with just the knee sleeves. But for me, these are a really, really good piece of kit. So where we are moving now is the shoes. I've got a couple different pairs of shoes that I take with me to the gym. One of which is probably the most important, which is the lifting shoes. You can see mine are a bit broken, so holding together with masking tape at the minute. But yeah, these are fantastic. They provide a really nice, solid, stable flooring to perform most movements. I use these for squats, I use these for overhead, I use these for stone lifting, I use these for anything that requires a really solid basis on the floor and a raised heel. These are absolutely fantastic. Ever since I got these, it made making depth on squats much, much better. They are absolutely fantastic. And yeah, I wouldn't go anywhere without them. That's why I'm still holding onto these pair even though the Velcro's gone on them. When I can afford a new pair, I will get them because these stick with me whenever I've got a squat, an overhead, uh, any sort of strongman stuff. These are absolutely fantastic. 
My next pair of shoes are just some simple flat soled uh, shoes that provide a bit of ankle support. I like to use these on things like the yoke for farmers, moving events, because I find I can move very quickly in them, but they're still flat and stable enough that I'm not rolling my ankle. As I said, it provides a bit of ankle support as well. Uh, these are really old shoes of mine. Definitely not bought just for lifting, but that's what they've transitioned into. And yeah, so I use these for yoke, farmers, any moving events, sometimes deadlifts, but I've got some more shoes that I use specifically for deadlifts now, but anything outside and moving, I tend to use these shoes for. They provide yeah, a good amount of support and are really good. So my next pair of shoes I was actually wearing because uh, I'm in after a deadlift session, but there are these uh, barefoot shoes. So you can see they're sort of melded to a foot shape and these are fantastic to wear when you're deadlifting because personally, I don't know about you, but I prefer to deadlift barefoot, but obviously that is not the most practical when you're doing competition or you're in a garage gym like I am, or in a public gym, some places don't like you being barefoot. So I bought these barefoot shoes for that exact reason, to simulate having bare feet as much as possible. And these are fantastic. The grip on the bottom of them is really good for sticking to a great deadlift starting position. And I use them every single deadlift session. I've started using them for bench sessions as well, uh, just because the grip on the bottom of them is really good and I can get in a really tight position with them. Uh, so yeah, that's what I use these for. Really, really useful in a bit of an unorthodox shoe that you might not see all the time in a gym bag. So that concludes everything I take to the gym with me pretty much every single time I go. The next few things are seasonal or event based that I don't take every single time. I tend to leave in the garage gym, but if I need them, I know where to get them. So the first thing is very simply just a gym towel. If I know it's gonna be warm and I'm gonna be sweating, then a gym towel is absolutely necessary to take with me. Uh, to dry myself off so if i'm doing log for example i'm not slipping and sliding on the log due to the sweat uh, really easy piece of kit to have everyone should have a gym towel but uh, this doesn't actually come with me all the time because i don't really sweat that much i mean i've just done a full back deadlift session i don't look sweaty at all um, but if i know it's going to be hot then i will do uh, and i'll make sure i'll take this with me the next couple of things as i say are event dependent so we've got atlas tacky and wd40 i'm holding it very lightly because both of these are just covered in tacky and I don't really want to get super sticky. But if I'm doing stones, then tacky and definitely WD-40 to get the tacky off again. Uh, otherwise it can be really quite disgusting. But this is one of the things that definitely doesn't come with me to any sort of gym unless I am doing stones, which nine times out of 10 is in the garage gym, so it just stays here. But I thought it was worth mentioning something else that I have. Another thing that I want to mention that I don't have here with me is smelling salts. If I know I'm going for a max out lift, I will have some smelling salts with me. I don't have a bottle at the minute because they are currently being delivered. And I didn't want to delay this video any further, but that is another thing that I take with me when I'm going for a max effort lift, just to give me that oomph uh, and yeah, help me get in the zone for lifting. So smelling salts is another thing that I do take with me. And finally, probably the most important thing, apart from the lifting belt in this is chalk. Chalk is an absolute staple of any strongman workout. And if a gym does not allow chalk, it is really a blow. And that's why I didn't include it in the essentials part because not every gym allows chalk. So I don't take it to every gym, but in my garage gym, I use this all the time. Fantastic, fantastic tool to utilize. If you don't know already, chalk takes the sweat off of your hands or anywhere else you apply it, gives you that grip. So I use it for log, I use it for squats, I use it for yoga, I use it for anything that I need to grip to really, really well. Uh, and that's why I've got a big tub of it that I take pretty much everywhere with me and I wanted to include in this video. So that is that. That is everything that I have in my gym bag at pretty much all times. Is there anything that you have in your gym bag that I don't have that you would recommend I get? Leave it in the comments down below. Is there anything that I have that you don't have that you're now going to go out and get because you've seen it and seen how it can be useful? Again, let me know in the comments below. But if you have made it this far and you haven't considered hitting subscribe, please go ahead and do so. I post regular strongman training content from an amateur level as I build to get stronger and stronger. And if that's something that interests you, leave a like down below to show you enjoy the video, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.